Hey, it's Amadou here, DP Review. We're at Photo Plus Expo with Chuck Westfall, Technical Advisor, Pro Engineering and Solutions Division from Canon. Chuck, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Glad to be here. A um, few questions I'd like to ask. Um, do you see the needs of photographers, even professional photographers, switching in, today, in today's marketplace um, to an emphasis more on connectivity? Um, in the pro side of things, I think that it's always been that way. Uh, you know, that's really kind of like uh, the cornerstone of the business is being able to uh, get the images out of the camera and into the workflow for uh, whatever application it's going to be. Um, but the EOS 1DX really is designed to touch on three major demographics for us. Um, in the professional area, I would divide that out as uh, the high-speed stills photographer, the high-res still photographer, and also the HD video. So uh, what we find is that within each of those categories, there's uh, a lot of emphasis in the 1DX on improving the performance of the earlier cameras uh, to address each of those needs. And uh, you know, speaking in particular about the connectivity, uh, the biggest thing that changed on this camera was the fact that we added in the, uh, the built-in uh, wired LAN. So I think uh, that feature is really going to open up a lot of new possibilities for us in terms of uh, servicing the main markets. Uh, I'll give you an example that one of the key areas that's going to take advantage of this right away is going to be the, uh, the photojournalism uh, segment because uh, there's a lot of uh, applications or assignments where these photographers are in venues that have a, a wired LAN of already in place, sure. whether it's a, a professional sports arena, or even uh, you know a political convention, or the Academy Awards. You know, the, the name of the game in all of these cases is to be able to get those images out of the camera and onto the wire as quickly as possible. Now, video has certainly become uh, a, a must-have for photographers now, and I'm wondering. Uh, looking forward, how do you envision that developing? Well, no question about the fact that, uh, that the DSLRs are still a very, very important and growing aspect uh, for HD video production, whether it's at the uh, independent film production level or all the way up to the high end. Um, you know, we've seen already in uh, cases of uh, Hollywood productions like The Avengers, where the 5D Mark II was used, uh, several other films but also uh, uh, TV shows and television commercials where people are using HDSLRs. But in all these cases, basically what uh, the customers told us is that they wanted a higher level of, of uh, features and performance than they were getting out of uh, the first generation. Now you've addressed the, uh, the, the split of the, of the market segment for the 1DX. I'm wondering, how do you see the differentiation in users of who is the 5D2 for? What type of shooter is that for versus the 1DX? Well, I'd have to say first and foremost uh, that uh, the 5D Mark II camera or that type of camera, which will also include the 7D into that group, um, is going to be appealing to people who have needs of priority for either budget, uh, size and weight. Those are really kind of the two of the main factors that drive that, uh, that business. But uh, by that same token, we also recognize that uh, there are many professional photographers who need a he heavier duty camera body for whatever reason. Um, you know, whether they're doing high volume work where having a 400,000 cycle shutter makes more sense in terms of their investment than a 100 or 150,000 cycle shutter. Uh, you know, it depends on their situational need, but uh, what we find is that there's enough demand for a higher range body to justify having both in the lineup rather than just one or the other. I see. Now, one thing that's interesting that we notice with our users uh, who will have the professional higher end gear, the 5Ds, the 70s, or even the, the 1D series, they'll also now have a, a smaller camera um, and, you know, addressing the popularity of the mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras. In terms of Canon's current offerings, what do you see as the models that are direct or indirect competitors to those? Again, it's kind of a, an individual situation. You know, these photographers, uh, some of them will say that the most important thing to them is the portability aspect. Uh, we recently introduced uh, the PowerShot S100, uh, and uh, one of the cam one of the features of that camera that I think makes a difference is the fact that uh, it brings in the 1080p. So. Uh, we have uh, you know, a very small, compact camera that does extremely well in low light, uh, that does 1080p, not at the level of an SLR, but uh, good enough to be able to meet the needs for some certain kinds of use. Maybe on the other hand, 
if uh, people determine that uh, they need better low light sensitivity or access to uh, a greater range of lenses, then it makes more sense for them to take a look at either the Rebel T3i or T2i. Now, I find it interesting that we haven't, um, in that discussion, we didn't uh, hear the, the G-series cameras. Is that something where you see an, an area of growth? I think the PowerShot G-Series has been very, very successful for us over the long term. And we introduced the first one in the year 2000, uh, and uh, now in 2011, we're up to the G12. Uh, we've done uh, very, very well with that type of camera. I don't think that there's any reason to suppose that uh, we're going to stop. But uh, uh, at the same token, uh, the challenges are now tougher than they were. And it makes it uh, important for us to be able to really I would say add in new features and functions that uh, that uh, the G series has not done yet. In order to make that happen uh, in a reasonable time frame, uh, we have to really uh, pay attention. Sure, sure. And the challenges involved are just in that form factor and adding more features to that. Is there some more technical challenges? The main challenge for us is in that high end is that uh, we're basically at a price point that competes directly with the the low end SLRs, and uh, so. Uh, the image quality of SLRs versus point shoot becomes a, a matter of comparison. And uh, that's the area that we need to really, I believe, you know, spend the most amount of time on G-Series. We're doing pretty good in terms of uh, within the compact camera class on image quality with a G camera, but there's room for improvement. Well, Chuck, I want to thank you so much for spending time with us. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much.